the first Saturday in consideration when we go here in St. Mary's. But in any case, <clears throat> in our great uh, supernatural battle, today there was a victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary over the devil. And that uh, in the intensity of a fight, whenever a fight becomes intense, we know that now they're going to be, we, we, we probably in the course of the next year, you know, most likely there's a good chance there's going to be a, a real test of our faith that may very well come with the forcing of the vaccines down people's throats in the beginning of making laws in our country that will actually make us choose for the first time between do I keep my job or do I keep my faith? Do I keep my house or do I keep my faith? Do I keep my, uh, my position in society? Do I keep out of jail or keep my faith? Our ancestors had to make these choices in the past and oftentimes, you know, the, the, the teams as though we're heading to the times where that choice may have to be made again. And that uh, for our times and for our people, and that uh, in the, in a battle when we when we fight, the the uh, how do we win? How do we win the conflict? Today, a few considerations actually taken from the prayer of the vesting of the cincture, and the when the bishop puts on the cincture, he says the prayer of Lord, okay, put on me the cincture of faith and the virtue of chastity. When the priest puts on the cincture, he says, put on the cincture of chastity. But when the bishop puts on the cincture, the prayer is changed to the cincture of faith and the virtue of chastity, that there may be a, uh, a, a, a conquering, a, 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 a extinguishing of the, the, the lust of the loins, that, and that there may be the, the complete sweetness of the victory of a total chastity. The sweetness of the victory of a total chastity. And what's interesting is that the, what the church teaches is that the, on our journey to, to sanctity, what is sanctity? The just man lives by faith. The just man lives by faith. When we live completely by faith, all sin goes out of our lives. Sin departs from our lives. If we don't live completely by faith, then insofar as we live less by faith, there's other things that take over our life. So how do we prepare for the coming fight? We don't know the precise day when they're going to say, you must do this, and either we do it and lose our faith, or we don't do it and keep our faith and, and, uh, and, and accept whatever punishments the world hands out for us. How do we know what to do? The rule is, say the fathers of the church, it's all a matter of what we love. What we love. And it's in the prayer about the chastity. The priest asks for the chastity. We all ask for chastity. But where does the total chastity come from? Total chastity comes from the, the cincture of faith. So what is lust? Lust is a sin. But it is a sin of a corrupted love. It's a sin of a love of a pleasure as opposed to a love of a person. And it's a, it's, it's a corrupted love. So how do you solve the problem of corrupted love? You replace it with a pure love. And what is the reality of pure love? Pure love can only be had by those that love God. But God is not seen perfectly with our eyes. And God is not possessed perfectly and completely in our hearts until we go to heaven. And so how do we see God? It is by the eyes of faith. So when we're battling between love and love, we're battling between the love of the world, the love of the things in this world, and the love of God, and the love of the things of God. What's going to be the temptation? One day they'll come to you, us, and they'll say, do you want to keep your house? Do you want to keep the things of this world, even legitimate things of this world? We all should have a house. We all should have a job. We all should have these material things God wants us to have in normal circumstances. But we'll have to choose between the love of the things of the world and the love of God. And if the love of faith predominates over the love of the things of the world, then we will make the right choice. If the love of the world predominates over the love of God, we will make the wrong choice. And so in fact, the best way to prepare for the upcoming battle, we must ask questions sometimes, like now there's a great theological dispute. 
amongst people, priests. They're saying, can you take the vaccines that come from aborted fetuses? Long article of the Society of St. Pius X says, yes, you can. And you can see, for instance, the Society of St. Pius X in the year 2000, Father Peter Scott wrote an article in which he gave the deep theological reasons why you cannot touch a vaccine that comes from an aborted fetus. It's in the Angelus Magazine. Answer Father Peter Scott. Is it immoral to take a vaccine that comes from an aborted fetus? And the answer is yes. We don't go into the argument now. The same Father Peter Scott wrote again in the year 2011. Another article in which it said, is it immoral, immoral to take vaccines from an aborted fetus? And the answer is, normally, you should try to avoid it, but if there is no possibility of avoiding it in order to in danger of losing your job or losing your health, then you, you can take the vaccine. Come forward to the year 2020. The Society of St. Pius X just put out an article a couple of days ago about the vaccines. Long three-part article. And in the article it says that it can even be a necessity to take the vaccine. So you've got the same society of St. Pius X gives three different answers. In the year 2000, it is immoral to take a vaccine and it cannot be justified if the vaccine comes from a board of fetus. And that is the correct answer. Secondly, the Father Peter Scott in the year 2011 gives another answer. You should not take vaccines that come from fetuses but if you have to, it's a material cooperation, it can be done in the, case of, in the case of necessity. And then, the third article in 2020 says, ideally you should not take vaccines if you can avoid the ones that come from the aborted fetuses, but if you have to take them, you can, and it can even be a necessity. Well, there's three teachings in the same source, and they all have be nice long articles, nice long explanations. How do we know what to do? When a man comes into this house and puts a gun to your head, and he says, you either do what I say, or I'm going to kill one of your children. If you do not do what I say, I will kill all your children. If you do what I say, I will kill only one. And if you don't do what I say, you'll be responsible for the death of your whole family. Don't you want to save your family? And when no answer is, you can never choose to do a lesser evil to avoid a graver one, and obviously you have to say no, and the whole family has to die, if that's what the wicked man chooses to do. But one man puts your gun to your head, do you have time? Uh, let me look up the theological manuals now. Let's look up theological manuals. What's moral for me to do? St. Thomas, question 40, or the Tertia Par, Second question 40, Article 3, what does that say? Ad Tertia. The answer is yes. Ad Quartum. The answer is no. We don't have time to look things up when they come with guns. So how do we prepare? The main way to prepare is love the faith above all else. Think of the things of God. Because how is it that a man turns to lust? What is the rule about lust? How do you avoid the problems of the temptation of the flesh? Turn the thoughts to something else. Don't think about the girls. Don't think about the, the, the place in which they are, etc. Think of something else. What is that something else that replaces the love of money, that replaces the love of comforts of this world, that replaces the love of pleasure? It is the love of God. And the love of God is this kind of a vague thing. God is infinite. God is everywhere. God is all in all places and God is all powerful. So how do I love God? I must love the faith. I must love the faith. Every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. I must desire the things of God. And this is what we must work on right now. What, God, what are they going to say to us? One day a man, a criminal, puts a gun to your head and says, give me your money. Give him your money. As I mentioned many times, the first day I arrived in Phoenix, Arizona, stationed there, the day I arrived in Phoenix, Arizona, on 7th Street and Baseline, the Taco Bell, a man was killed 
when I arrived there, he was shot to death because he was being robbed. And when they went through his dead body, the man was scared and ran away and never took the money. He had $4.23. He died in order to save $4.23, which he lost anyway. He was never able to spend the $4.23. Was it worth dying for $4.23? No, it wasn't. Is it worth dying for Christ? Yes, it is. He didn't think about the fact that he had $4.23. He thought about the fact that you're putting a gun to my head, you're going to take my money. You can't take my money. You're not going to take my money. I'll die rather than let you take my money. And the gang member says, fine, you die. And he killed him. And then people mocked the man. He died for four dollars and twenty-three cents. Could he make a decision at the time what he was going to do? The decision was made before. He had to decide before how important money is in his life. How important the things of this world are in his life. How important his things are as opposed to the things of God. So that when the man comes, like St. John of God, I think it was St. John of God, the thief came and was stealing everything in his house. So he came and realized that he needed help. So he helped the thief load everything in his car, load in his cart. And they realized there were four thieves, and then all of a sudden there were five, and they loaded everything and went away. Who's the fifth guy? Well, that's the man we're stealing from. He helped him load the stuff. And he said, you can have it. I don't want you to be a thief. And he gave it to them. What was his thought when he walked into the house? Maybe they needed more than I do. And so he gave it to them. He didn't think about that when he was going there. We cannot prepare for a battle on the day of the fight. We prepare for a battle before the fight. We have to decide now. Do I love faith more than anything else? Well, here's a daily test. What do I think about now? What am I worried about now? Am I worried about my soul? Am I worried about the things of God? Or am I worried about my bank accounts and the things of the world? And of course, we think human beings worry about the things of the world. We all worry about things of the world. But what is our first worry? What does it say in that prayer? Do you want to be chased? Do you want to have the totius casitatis? The sweetness of a total chastity? What is it that makes you have that sweetness of the total chastity? The love of the faith. When a man loves a woman, and loves him, loves her most perfectly. He cannot, he has no place in his mind and no place in his heart for any other girls. And therefore he's not even tempted by them because his heart is filled. Why can't we love God? Why can't we love the faith? We must love God and the faith and let this be the center of our loves. And then when we put a gun to our head, we won't need to look up in the book. What am I to do? What do our Lord Jesus Christ say to us? When you go before the magistrates, that is the judges of, these world, of this world, do not think what you shall say, for the Holy Ghost will inspire you what to say. Look at the lives of the saints. Sometimes the criminal came in, St. Thomas the Apostle. They came in to St. Thomas's cave, and he jumped up, and he ran away. Because that's what the Holy Ghost wanted him to do that particular day. There was only one exit from the cave. And he went and a new exit was open. There are now two entrances to the cave. The second was open because St. Thomas was running away. Another day in the exact same cave, a man came to kill St. Thomas again. And this time he did not run away. He refused to run away. Sometimes saints hide when they are chased. Sometimes saints run when they are chased. And sometimes saints go to those that chase them. And sometimes saints chase the ones who are trying to kill them. Which one are we supposed to do? If we love the faith, if we love God, if we contemplate the things of God, if we try to understand what does God want, what is the truth about vaccines? What is, what does God want? 
what is right before God. I love that, and that's what I want to do. And then when they come with guns, and they come with the soldiers, and they tell us, do this and do that, we will be inspired by God. And one saint will run away. Another will run too. Another will stand his ground. Another will hide. And which is the one that must be done? It will depend upon the circumstances of the battle, and we do not know the circumstances until they come. I don't know the circumstances when they come. But when they come, if I love God, if I love the faith, if I want what's right, and I don't love the things of the world, and I love the things of God more than other things of the world, that love will guide me. St. Thomas one of teaches, there are 11 passions. One of them is love. Another is fear. Another is anger. Eleven of them. But the passion that rules all is love. Love rules our fear. We fear when the something that we love is going to be taken from us. Fear and anger and the other passions, they are governed by love. So if we control our loves, and if our love is always right, then the other passions will have the correct response. And if our love is not right, the other passions will have the wrong response. So it's, may I have the cincture of faith. Put on me, O Lord, the cincture of faith. This girds the loins. And the cincture of faith, because faith is what the priest is about, faith is what the bishop is about, Faith is what the church is about, and what the saint is about, and what all Catholics are about. Then you will find the sweetness of a total chastity, the sweetness of a total purity, and lust shall be taken away. Because all that lust is, is it is a corrupted love. And if we don't have a corrupted love, then there is no place for the devil to get in. Hence, we must build the correct kind of love. And as we enter the battle, who loves? Who loves the faith more than anything else? Let's strive for that love of faith greater than anything else. And this is how we become saints. And this is how we prepare for battle. And then whatever day the devil comes, let him come. If he comes through the back door, the front door, down from the ground, up from the air above, it doesn't matter from whence he comes. If God wants us to escape, we shall escape. If he wants us to eat, though we've been taking away food for seven days in the lion's den, Abigail shall bring food to us like it did Daniel in the lion's den. And if he wants the lions to consume us, they'll be consumed like Saint, Saint uh, uh, Ignatius of Rome. We're going to, whatever God wants, and whatever is, whatever is to his blessed will, and whatever is right, that's going to happen to us if we love the faith greater than anything else. Don't just live by the faith because it's the minimum requirement to not go to hell, but live by the faith because it's the reason to live. And then, when the troubles come, we'll be ready, and we shall win in the conflicts and the attacks against whatever conflicts and attacks the devil throws at us. Who's there with you all? In the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen.